Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about degenerative Darwinism, which is a term used to describe Darwinian processes which are too limited to be able to result in cumulative adaptive evolution. To start with, copying. Copying is the essence of living systems, and indeed life can be effectively defined as being that which persists via copying. However, not all copying has sufficient fidelity to be able to support cumulative adaptive evolution. And to give a couple of examples, humans regularly produce low fidelity copies when they make a photocopy of a photocopy, and such copies don't usually form chains of indefinite length or undergo cumulative adaptive evolution. And then the second example is um, where existing organic creatures can sometimes encounter mutagenic environments which cause them to suffer from reduced copying fidelity when it comes to their genomes, and then they exhibit devolution and eventually fall into an extinction vortex. Conventionally, Darwinian evolution requires copying, variation and selection, and these processes are all ubiquitous in nature, as we'll now see. Copying is not a phenomenon which is confined to the realm of complex biological entities, and in fact many simple and inanimate natural systems also exhibit copying processes. So for example, if you imagine a sheet of glass which has been fractured by an impact in the middle, then you'll see that information about the point of the fracture has been propagated to a wide range of different locations all around the edge of the sheet of glass. Another example is erosion. If you've got an eroded landscape and you look at adjacent streams in that landscape, then the stream directions are found to be correlated, showing that copying has taken place. Radiation results in an awful lot of copying. So, for example, the sun broadcasts its location in all directions, and the moon also spreads copies of information about its location too, using reflected light. Gravity waves propagate information about the location of all material objects. Electromagnetic waves propagate information about electrical and magnetic fields, and sound waves spread copies of information about the locations of vibrations in all directions. Um, flames do a similar thing, they spread information about the source of the fire. Um, and another example is ripples, so if you have ripples, then that often involves a signal about the location where the ripples started from being propagated out to a range of different points around the periphery and then crystals. So in a snowflake, for example, information about the orientation of a seed crystal is propagated reliably in six directions. And there's lots of other examples as well. Um, the ripples on sand dunes, and whirlpools, landslides, lightning, explosions, and tornadoes all exhibit copying processes. And the next variation, so copying is rarely perfect. And in many natural systems that involve copying, you can see that the copied information is subject to distortions and changes as it's transmitted. Noise is everywhere, and so is natural variation. And then selection, so another ubiquitous process in nature is the loss of information. And some things last longer than others, and this is true even if those things are not alive. There's a law of survival of the stable, of which natural selection in biology is a special case. I've got web pages on universal selection and nano-Darwinism, which have a lot more details about this whole idea. Copying, variation and selection are all ubiquitous processes in nature, and these are the basic prerequisites for Darwinian evolution. However, many of the systems I've just gone over don't have sufficiently high copying fidelity to be able to support cumulative adaptive evolution, and some of these systems also limit the quantity of information copied, or they limit how many times the information can be copied in series. Nonetheless, with copying, variation and selection, Darwin's theory of evolution is a natural fit for modelling the dynamics of these kinds of systems. The most common term for this kind of broad application of evolutionary theory is universal Darwinism, and use of the term universal seems to be justified in part by the types of process described here. I've previously proposed that the term nano-Darwinism is used to describe a cut-down version of Darwinism without copying processes. The kind of Darwinism described here, which does have copying, but still lacks much in the way of cumulative adaptive evolution, is probably best described as being degenerative Darwinism. The basic idea behind applying a Darwinian framework to systems which exhibit copying, but are unable to support cumulative adaptive evolution, is to be able to build accurate models of their dynamics, and to properly understand how they work. If a system exhibits copying, variation and selection, you have to use a model which includes those elements if you're trying to predict how it will behave. Another virtue of using Darwinism is that it's a sing single simple framework which unites a range of diverse phenomena, so insights in the dynamics of one system may thus illuminate other systems which exhibit similar Darwinian dynamics. 
and then to discuss adaptation briefly, although they might not be able to develop much in the way of cumulative adaptations and complexity on a biological scale, such systems can still exhibit basic forms of adaptation. In fact, most complex adaptive systems exhibit at least this degenerative form of Darwinism. The copying and selection which are involved are part of the explanation of why they behave in an adaptive manner. Crystals, whirlpools and glass fractures are all capable of adapting to their environment. A familiar case to many involves electrical discharge paths inside plasma balls which adapt dynamically to the pattern of electrical resistance on the outside of the ball. The reason for these kinds of adaptive behaviour comes down to the Darwinian dynamics that they exhibit. Degenerative Darwinism is part of the theory of universal Darwinism. It's an important idea if you want to understand how the world works. The idea currently appears to be an underappreciated one, so please help spread, spread the word about it if you can. Um, enjoy!